good morning. I need more sleep. Last night was rough. We got some cool stuff to do today. I think we should get up. Better get a move on. Gonna get dressed. Wow, last night's really screwing us. We are extremely uh, tired today and uh, getting a slow start. We wanted to be out of the house by about nine. I think it's a bit past 9.30 now. So I guess not too, too bad, but uh, still got a few things here to pack up and then we're gonna be on our way. believe that you wanted to come to Denny's or I guess you didn't want to but we got desperate on the way to our first activity. It's like want is a very strong word but um, I'm hungry and my stomach wants it. And it doesn't look too bad. No, well we haven't gotten our food yet but the inside is like I guess when I have um, when I think of Denny's I think of a bit of a crungier yeah. establishment. But, you know, it's actually pretty, like, modern, modern... Modern, old school. Yeah, modern 1950s. Yeah. Hopefully the food is good. Yeah. Breakfast is done. We went to Denny's. Oh. Well, we were gonna go to McDonald's, which to me is another, oh, but you usually like it. But um, yeah, we're running late for our first attraction after the whole towing incident last yeah. night, which got us to bed like super late, unfortunately. We had a rough start to the morning. We wanted to be out of the house by nine because we wanted to get there by 9.30. But it is now late. Yeah, quarter after 11. So we're behind schedule, but we got some buffer, so we're okay. Uh, and yeah, on the way here, we saw the Denny's and decided to do that instead of McDonald's. And it was actually pretty good. I enjoyed my meal. So did I. We were, I think we were both like leaning over plates, shoveling food in our mouths, going, Can you believe this is good? Yeah. Like in shock. Because yeah. we've had not so successful Denny um, experiences in the past. Yeah, so it's hit or miss. Yeah, this uh, one is, uh, you can tell that this one's a, the one, they, they put a bit more thought or quality into it just by looking at the um, inside. A little bit more effort. Yeah. Yeah, so that was filled the need. We needed some, some food for today's activities. I don't think I could have lasted till lunchtime today. So we are, are going to make a move here. We need to get going. All right, we're at our first attraction. I'm really excited. This was one of the things that we knew we wanted to do before we even got to Vancouver. Uh, something that we had researched. It's one of two things we're going to do today. Uh, this place is Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. And it's a really famous suspension bridge. Um, I think the whole park kind of revolves around the suspension bridge being here for so long. The bridge is 450 meters long and 230 meters high. So it crosses quite a vast expanse here across the canyon. And it's in a rainforest. There's a lot of really old tree growth here that looks like it's gonna be really cool to uh, to explore. And I'm not quite sure what there is to do here. Uh, we just got through the gate. I have the map. It looks like there's quite a few things to check out. Uh, and yeah, really excited and it's a great day. It's not sunny. It's a little bit overcast. It's cool So it should be a really comfortable day to to uh, Explore this park Getting here is really easy. We had the car if we had not stopped for breakfast We would have been here in about 15 20 minutes from downtown Vancouver uh, Or if you don't have a car, it's really really easy. You can take a free shuttle bus So there's shuttle buses that run periodically from Canada Center Just look it up online and you can get out here uh, without a problem so let's go start exploring.
first stop along the way to the bridge is this sort of like totem pole park. Um, it's a little area where there's a whole ton of different totem poles, uh, like the short ones about my height, and then there's really, really tall ones as you, as you would kind of envision of a totem pole. My favorite one is this really tall one. At the top it has a, a raven carved in. I believe it's a raven. It has like that traditional kind of beak that I associate with totem poles. And I just, I just love staring at it. I just love staring at all of them actually. They're all really interesting and uh, varied designs and the faces, the grimacing. So I can kind of see the bridge peering through the trees over here just past the totem poles. So we're gonna make our way over there and just see how rickety it actually is. Are you ready? Are you gonna be spend it up? out onto the bridge. It is wobbly. <laughs> it's really quite wobbly. All right, we're out on the bridge. We're about halfway and it is extremely wobbly. Uh, this is a really good test for the stabilization on the camera. People you are scared. Yeah, people, people are, are like holding on. Yeah, there are some people definitely afraid uh, out here. Uh, and, and like they were grabbing at the at the side here at the cable between us as they're trying to get by. But this is really cool. It's not crazy high. But I wouldn't want to fall. It's, <laughs> it's a fun experience. Yeah it People is. Are like, like the, our mission piece covers the bridge, it covers the totem poles and it covers the the cliff walk. walk. Yeah. Yeah it's, it's a really great outing. But you, but your uh, shortness, your midgetness is finally paying off. It is because you're like glued to this thing. You got really good balance. Wow. I can dance, I can be I'm showing off a bit. <laughs> yeah. I think we're gonna keep moving across and see what's on the other side. All right, we're almost to the other side now. Starting to get a little bit more stable. Maybe not. <laughs> wow, it really sways. We survived the suspension bridge. Well, we still have to go back over it. So hopefully we survive that as well. But now we're heading to something called the Treetop Adventure. And there's seven uh, mini suspension bridges, I guess, going from tree to tree right above us right now. It's supposed to give you an interesting view of the rainforest up in the trees, a squirrel's eye view, they call it. Are you uh, looking forward to being a squirrel? Yes, I am very much looking forward to being a squirrel and I don't look guilty because I was playing Pokemon in this beautiful setting. Why are you shaking your head at me and said I wasn't? You are a disgrace. No. <laughs> We're up on the top. So we're up now at the full squirrel's eye view over the rainforest here. And the trees are spectacular. They're huge. They're just massive. You can see this tree. And all of these platforms are attached to the trees. And the little suspended bridges here from tree to tree are quite wobbly as well. But not quite as wobbly as that huge suspension bridge. I think I found somebody I know. You having fun up here? Yes. Did you find any nuts? No. You didn't find any stashes? I didn't find a squirrel. Oh, you're the squirrel. What? <laughs> We're both squirrels. Oh. Do squirrels do that? That's the chipmunk. I don't know actually. It's really neat, eh? Yeah, they did a really good job with this attraction. I was noticing on their website that this whole rope or this whole suspension bridge system up here in the trees 
maybe the whole park is lit up like really, really well, like completely lit up for Christmas. Uh, they, they put like lights, Christmas lights all over the bridges and the trees and it looks really magical. I would love to be here for Christmas and witness that. But we're getting, getting quite high actually. Somehow this feels a little bit higher than the suspension bridge. I was just reading on a sign over here that these massive trees, it can take up to 36 hours for the tree to to move water from its root up to its canopy. That's in, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Very crazy. I was doing the illustration behind you. Oh, I thought from roots to the canopy. Our life as squirrels has come to an end. We're at the end of the treetop adventure here. That was really neat. A lot of people, but really cool. Uh, the trees, I keep, keep being blown away by these trees. There's two massive trees right here of varying species, I believe. There's this one. The really sort of deep, deep bark. And there's this one. This one here with much more of like a, it's a cedar. The scale of the treetop adventure here is really quite impressive, especially when you take into account that they didn't use any heavy equipment to build the treetop adventure. Uh, they used old-fashioned methods like pulleys and ropes, and they didn't fasten this stuff to the trees using nuts or bolts or nails or anything that would permanently damage the trees. And they did it on purpose because they didn't want to ruin the ecosystem here in the rainforest. So what they had to do was use specially designed metal collars that they put around the trees that evenly distributed the pressure and those can be removed and the tree will be happy happy and perfectly fine afterwards. But apparently that's good for the trees because it's like exercise for them. It helps make them stronger. So that's really cool. Especially like I'm standing under them and they're like really high and they look very heavy. So someone put some muscle into building these things. Stretch! More! Wow, look at the size of these trees. I keep talking about the trees, uh, but they're really impressive. Like here's a couple of good specimens that you can get right up to here. They built this platform around them. Tree hugger, I knew it. They're massive. We did. It's this little cabin they built out on the pond where it's full of little baby trout. Well, baby, I don't know how old they are, but they're small. Nicole said, those aren't trout, they're not big enough to eat. I'm like, well, fish don't come out ready to eat. They have to grow up. Um, Just like you. I've been growing you for a long time waiting hey, to eat you. Do you eat me? nature's edge now which is uh, the opposite spectrum of the treetop. We're down in the rainforest on a boardwalk that takes you in and among all of the trees and along the edge of the uh, valley or cliff down into Capilano River and then we're going to find the infamous fallen tree and yeah. learn about that. It sounds ominous. Yeah. So on nature's walk, we're just sort of making our way down towards the uh, valley and uh, we saw, we came across a really weird looking tree. It kind of looks like two leg bones joining at the knee. I wonder what happened to it, what the story is on that thing. What do you think about that thing? 
I think it's nifty looking. I also think it's cold. Nifty looking? What does that mean? It's nifty Oh, looking. nifty. You just try speaking with these Invisaligns. I am actually. Oh dear. It's also much colder down here at the bottom of the trees than at the top. I feel like a big temperature drop. Yeah, uh, you're right. That's true. I'm feeling a bit chilly, but I wasn't up there. I am Good observation. Yeah, perceptive. We were commenting on how the temperature dropped. Well, it feels like it's dropped significantly once we got off the top of like the uh, treetop adventure in, down here on this boardwalk. And we found a sign that explains that maybe. It says here that if you plant trees around your house, it can help reduce summer temperatures by 10 degrees. And in addition to providing shade, the, tr the leaves on the tree release moisture, which helps cool the air. So these trees are releasing moisture, cooling the air. The suspension bridge, the main one that goes across the valley, is supposedly ridiculously strong. Uh, and I will believe it based on how many people it can support and the swaying and rocking of the bridge. But in 2006, uh, in November, a tree actually tested the strength of the bridge. A 46 ton Douglas fir fell over in a crazy windstorm and landed right on the bridge. And the bridge just held firm and the tree snapped in half. Apparently, a section of the tree remained on the bridge and they had to come and carefully remove it. They had to do that very carefully because if they had removed the whole thing at once, the bridge would have acted like a uh, catapult and um, launched the tree or the person cutting it up into the air. How big do you think my wingspan is going to be? Mm, pigeon! What? The pigeon's not even on the board. Can you get up there and we'll see. How big am I? Pterodactyl? That's, That's not on the board either. <laughs> Aww, wah wah wah. How big are you? I think I'm about a Canada goose. No eagle for you? No. Okay, I think I'm an eagle. Let's check for me. I think you're a hummingbird. Okay, I think I'm an eagle. How can you be an eagle if I wasn't an eagle? What I make up in size, what I lack in size, I make up in belief. <laughs> See? Six. Eagle. No, you might be a great horned owl. Yeah. on the suspension bridge heading back to the other side. We finished everything over there. The uh, treetop adventure, the boardwalk, and we have one more thing to check out here before we head back, or before we head to our next attraction actually. It's three o'clock, um, so we'll probably be out of here another half an hour, and then we have uh, to do our next attraction, which is not really an attraction. You'll see what I mean. But the suspension bridge is amazing. It has the strength to hold two fully loaded 747s, which makes me feel pretty confident when I'm standing out in the middle of it here. I'm just waiting for Nicole. She's trying to catch up. She was over on that platform. There she is. So that I could come out here and she could take some pictures of me as she's going to do right now. Our last activity here at Capilano Park is the cliff walk. And this looks really cool and it's supposedly quite the engineering feat. They've suspended some sort of catwalk out around a cliff. So you can like walk where you shouldn't be walking really. <laughs> I guess just like the suspension bridge, but this is looking pretty cool. You could see it from the suspension bridge. And it's a series of sort of spiral staircases as you can see behind me. And uh, look at this one. These narrow staircases heading down to the cliff walk.
I'm out on the peak of the cliff walk now. It's kind of scary. I, it feels very uh, sturdy. It doesn't really move too, too much, but it, we're quite high up and we're, it's just the way that it's constructed is rather crazy. That's the view down. And there's the cable system holding this up. This is really cool. The round part's really cool, but it continues. I didn't realize it was so long. And you were walking right along the cliff here. With an amazing drop below us. Neat views. Here's a neat view. A little waterfall. We've been having such a great time here. I def definitely recommend coming to check this out. I'll put more details down below. Um, you, we might disappear for a little bit because we're, this is our last battery and it's blinking that it's done. So yeah, we'll eventually get a new battery in here and uh, we'll show you where we're at. We'll probably be at our next location, our next attraction. This is a scary spot. Yeah. Not really. Oh, people want to go. <laughs> There's a really neat demonstration of the power of water here in terms of erosion. Never really knew that it could do this much damage, but here, take a quick look before this battery is completely exhausted. There's 15 years of erosion, 25 years of erosion, 50 years of erosion. So we were gonna to go to a full place. I don't know if I mentioned that. Nicole saw a full place when we were at Denny's and then she was craving that, but we decided not to do that. We came to a sushi restaurant instead. And this one, Zen Sushi, was actually recommended to us by our Airbnb host. He said this place was a really good place to uh, come for some food, especially after the activities that we're planning today. So it's not gonna be celebratory as he was thinking. This is gonna be powering us through the next activity and uh, managed to jerry-rig up some power for the camera, charging batteries, got the camera hooked up directly to an external battery pack so I, I can do a bit of filming. And uh, the food here so far has been really good. They had this sort of salad with fresh little shrimp on top and it's really refreshing. Kind of is exactly what I needed after what we've been up to this morning so far. And we're just waiting for the main event. Uh, we're both starving. Nicole said, I hope that we're going to be full. I think we will be. I, can, I saw our food being prepared. It looked pretty substantial. We got rolls and sushi. But we're hungry and we're piggy. We are hungry. You are piggy. Hey! Did you enjoy this morning? Yeah, that was really fun. I didn't expect it to be um, so extensive. We were there for four hours and um, we kept an eye on the time. But if we didn't have an activity planned afterwards, I think we could have spent a lot more time there. Um, I'm really enjoying my appetizer. It's crazy when they bring out a dish and it looks really simple and you're like, I can do that at home. And then you start gobbling up and you're like, I can't do that at home. How do they do that? So, so far, lunch, no, dinner? This is lunch. lunch. Late been, lunch. Late lunch is fantastic. What am I thinking? Well, first off, this looks really quality. It looks really well made. The fish looks really fresh. I can't wait to eat it. Uh, and secondly, I think Nicole's right. We're going to be hungry after this. <laughs> I think I can eat three of these plates, but we'll see how we do. Let's try this. Soy sauce. It's kind of neat. Dispenser. I've never seen a dispenser quite like that before. So I got a dynamite roll, which has a tempura shrimp inside, along with looks like some avocado and some uh, soup, zucchini, cucumber, and fish egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could taste the sesame. 
they've also toasted them a little bit, it looks like. Mmm. Mm. It's a good balance. There's also some mayo in there. Mmm. So I'm gonna try a piece of fish. I'm gonna try some hamachi. With a shio leaf underneath, I believe. Mmm. The shio leaf's amazing. Really? It complements the f fish really well. Shio leaf, it kind of has a citrusy sort of note to it. Pretty sure that was shio. Wasn't expecting that to taste so good, actually. The spicy roll looks good. There's also some cucumber, maybe some more shio leaf in there. And the fish is not super hashed up. It's still pretty chunky. Mmm. It's like perfectly balanced. Mm -hmm. With that little hint of spice, mm -hmm. but it still allows the flavor of the fish to come through. And the cucumber's a nice addition to that. Yeah, this place is great. Our Airbnb host did not send us astray. <laughs> yeah, let's devour this, as I think we're going to do, and then get on to the next, uh, our next activity, our second activity for the day. The chef sent us over a little treat. It looks amazing. It's, it's wild sockeye salmon, and it looks like it's kind of like a spicy, spicy uh, sauce on it and uh, on a little bit of rice, but also on a chip. I think they call this uh, fish and chip, the waitress said when she brought it over. That was really nice of him. Let's try it. Without making a mess, I don't think so, but. Mmm. Is it spicy? No, I don't think it's spicy. It's almost, when it has like a sesame flavor, it almost has a sesame flavor or a peanutty flavor, some kind of nutty flavor. It's really, really good. It's a good combination. And the crispy cracker, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. That's gonna also help us with our hunger problem. <laughs> Your turn to try this special chef creation. I know. I think the bottom piece she said was tortilla. Yeah. Of some sort. Watching you eat yours made me salivate, but I'm glad you went first because now I have mine to savor. <laughs> mm. Sesame. Yeah, sesame. First of all, my mouth is very, very happy. Second of all, they have a really unique taste. It's their sesame, but after the initial sesame taste hits you, Sweet. It's really, really good. I can't place it, but I'm enjoying it immensely. Thank you. Yeah, it's really good, eh? We got lucky. Yeah. We've just wrapped up lunch. Well, actually, I wrapped up lunch about five minutes ago. Nicole just wrapped up lunch. And this place is fantastic. I mean, we've had a lot of really good sushi in Vancouver. Pretty much everywhere we've been, the sushi has been really high quality. I guess because of the, the fresh fish here. But this place has been a step above. It's really, really good. Zen, Zen Sushi. I'll put the information in the description box below. Um, but yeah, this is a step above, eh? It comes with a bit of a step up in price, but I think it is well worth it. It's really well prepared. The fish is really fresh. It's just the rolls. The rolls were incredible. I think my favorite piece was the piece of hamachi with the uh, shio leaf. I think a shio leaf, some kind of leaf. It was a really interesting pairing. Really good, like interesting in a good way, not in a bad way. Uh, really, really tasty. Uh, they complemented each other extremely well. And I've never seen that before, ever. I think Nicole's still chewing. So let's ask her what she thinks. Nicole wants more. Nicole wants a lot more. <laughs> um, yeah, my favorite, I would agree with Mike. My favorite is tamachi. Um, I kind of expected all the fish to be good. Um, Mike's dynamite roll, that the tempura and that was wow! It was so crispy and the shrimp flavor really came through. And what I think surprised me the most was the um, shrimp salad that we got in the beginning. I forgot about the shrimp yeah, salad. Yeah, when it came, it looked so simple, and I was like, meh. I wasn't expecting anything, and then. 
you take the first bite and it's just it cleanses your entire like mouth like it's, it's like a shower for your mouth a good shower mm. it was delicious so we're gonna wrap up here and uh, get a move on I think we'll be at our next next spot in a good 20 minutes five o'clock like several hours behind schedule we're at our next activity for the day uh, and it's a bit of a fail 